Greetings, mighty companions, and welcome back to Practical and Healing Applications of Course in Miracles with me, Anna Kajawa Quinn, and welcome you guys at the Rocky Mountain Miracle Center. Welcome, welcome, Carol. Lovely to see you. And welcome you guys on Facebook and YouTube, or however you're watching it. And uh, we're just going to start by taking a couple of minutes to allow our minds to just settle in, in the moment, where we are right now. So, take a breath, close your eyes if you haven't already, and just allow your mind to be present right here, right now, where you are, and just breathe. Let go of everything that's occupying your conscious mind. Is she thirsty? Do you want me to go get a bowl of water? Yeah. Okay. You'll have to get me some. Come yeah. on, well, guys, I'm going to get you some. Here, just take this two. Sorry. All right, take two. <laughs> Practice bringing our minds back to this holy instant now. Remembering this time is the only time there is. This time is the only time there is. bringing our minds out of the past which is gone and bringing our minds out of the future which has not happened yet and allowing our minds to come back home and rest in this perfect precious powerful moment Right here, right now, is where all power, all healing, all comfort, all the answers, all the inspiration that you desire and that you need is here, right now, where you are, nowhere else. self within, your real self, your spirit self, your eternal self within you, acknowledging it, breathing into it, feeling for it, opening your heart and your mind to it. I want to feel my true self within me now. I want to know my soul. I want to remember my 
soul remind me of you. Speak to me, my soul. I desire your love and your wisdom. What does your soul have to say to you today as you acknowledge it? Listen. Thank your soul for not abandoning you even when you would forget about it. Thank you, soul. give this time, this healing circle, to the spirit of truth and healing. Spirit of truth and healing, we give you this gathering of mighty companions where we come together to listen to the truth and to be healed by the truth together. We thank you for this opportunity to hear your words healing us and comforting us and inspiring us. We thank you for this opportunity and we give you full charge of this healing encounter, this holy encounter. Decide for healing for us. And thank you. And to that we say, Amen. So when you're ready, just take a breath and open your eyes. And yawn and stretch. All right. Beautiful. Hi, Trisha. Hi, Pam. Hello. Thank you, honey. Irene says, hello, my tees. <laughs> That's y'all. That's us. And we all say hello to you, Irene. Hello. And hi. Hello, everyone. We've got Trisha and Pam and Irene on. All right, so even though yesterday in Matt's class here at the Miracle Center, we did uh, a deep section on special relationships, apparently Spirit thought we needed to go another round. And uh, that's why I do random number generator, to make sure that I am not in charge of what we study. You know, if it had been up to me and it came up, I'd be like, oh, we did that yesterday. That was good enough. <laughs> so, but here we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about um, relationships as we have done them and what we have used our relationships for besides loving, <laughs> right? We've been using relationships for something besides love. And this section is going to talk about it. It's going to talk about what we have been using our relationships for, what we've been using our relationships to hide from us. Um, so that we can get to whatever it is that we've been using our relationships to hide from. Sound good? Okay. All right, so um, the, we are in chapter 15, and it's section 7 in my, uh, in the original edition. Um, it's called The Basis of the Special Relationship. And uh, Matt, will you let me know if that is what it is in the blue cover edition? Uh, chapter 15, section 7. How does, how does it yours begin? It says, beyond the poor attraction of a special yep. love relationship. So it is the same section, but it's called the needless sacrifice. Oh, okay. So in the blue in the blue covered edition, it's chapter 15, section 7, and it's called the needless sacrifice. Okay? Thank you, Irene, for listing that. And uh, if you have, you know what, I'm just going to go to the blue covered edition right now, so that we're no confusion. So, all right. so fifteen what? Fifteen seven. Seven. Fifteen seven. And uh, in yours, Greg, it's uh, beyond. 
Yes, the basis of the special relationship. All right. So, but I'm going to go. So, Greg, you'll be in the original edition. We're going to be in the blue edition, blue cover edition. So, if you see differences, you know, let us know. It's always interesting. I'll raise my hand. <laughs> you better. And wave it. She yes. might call it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go like this. Exactly. Yeah, you back me up. All right, exactly. Okay, we got a, got a team going here. Okay, so we're talking about uh, the blue covered edition, the need of sacrifice. And it starts off by saying, Be, beyond the poor attraction of the special love relationship and always obscured by the special love relationship is the powerful attraction of the father for the father's children. Or we could say the creator for the creator's children. All right, so that's the first thing it wants to tell us about the special love relationship. And this, this special love relationship is the, the relationship that the fearful mind sponsors to destroy. <laughs> That's what the special relationship is. It's what fear would use relationships for and what fear would make of relationships. That's what a special relationship is. Okay, and the, the, the author uses special love relationship and special hate relationship interchangeably. Okay. And what makes it an unreal relationship is that it's special. Okay. So a special relationship is like, oh, there's a love for this and there's a love for that. I love you sometimes, I, but I don't love you. And I, it's, a, it's a belief that love is special. Okay. I can give love to this person. I can pull it back. Uh, I can, uh, love can be taken from me, I can give love to you and not to you. The, I, the belief that love is special is an illusion. It isn't true. If you, if you believe that love is special, something that you give to somebody but not to another, or something you give to somebody at one point and then you take it back, that's not love. So it's really an unreal love relationship, a fake love relationship. And this is saying that uh, beyond the attraction of the unreal love relationship and always hidden by the unreal love relationship is what is our powerful attraction of us to God. The, the powerful attraction of the creator for the creator's children. So it's like this. Our creator is like powerfully attracted to us. Our creator is like, I love you. I, you are my creation. I love you. That's all I do is love you. Okay. And, uh, but we are hiding that. We, we are afraid of this powerful love that is coming to us and for us all the time. We're trying to hide it. We're afraid of that kind of love. We would prefer to have a love that, you know, loves us sometimes and very conditionally and very partially and then a love that, you know, can be withheld and withdrawn at other times. You know, fake love. We're receiving real love, unchanging love, unconditional love all the time from our Creator, but we don't want that. We're afraid of that. We would rather have love as we made it up, which is really just fear. You know, whatever it is that you can give to somebody and then you can take it back, that is not love. Okay. So, so interesting. So really there's this great love that is that we are being bathed in, given all the time, unconditionally, all the time, forever. And, uh, but we're afraid of that, so we're covering up that great love with fake love. You know, something that we're calling love that isn't love at all. It's really just fear being called by the name of love. 
And those are the relationships that we have made. We have made relationships that really are just fear, bargains, guilts, compromises, uh, but we call it love, okay? That, and so that's a special love relationship. And what's its purpose? Is to hide the powerful attraction of our creator for us. It's deep, deep to think about our creator attracted to us. It's like, doesn't that sound a little weird? <laughs> I think my creator is attracted to me. <laughs> is that okay? <laughs> is that like creepy or something? <laughs> and then it goes on to say, there is no other love that can satisfy you. Because there is no other love. Oh, huh, very interesting. There is no other love. What? The, there's no other love that can satisfy us besides what? The love that our Creator is pouring out to us and that we also are returning to our Creator unbeknownst to our conscious mind. Okay? The Course of Miracles says that creation really is the, the, the love of our Creator pouring onto us and us and us uh, giving that love back. That's what creation is. It's this love between creator and creation that's eternal, it's just flowing, 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 flowing. No break, no end, no conditions, just the love between creator and creation, okay? The Course in Miracles says that's what creation is, that's what life is. It's the love of the creator pouring upon the creation and the creation uh, loving creator back. There is no other love. So the love that seems to go from a, a body to another body that can be withdrawn, that can be taken away, that can be taken back, uh, anything related to a body. You know, real love has nothing to do with a body. Real love has nothing to do with bodies. No wonder we're having so much trouble in relationships. Yeah, because with other people. Yes, because I'll go home and get a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> it's really confusing. It's hard to. Uh, I mean, yes. It's not confusing, but it's. And there's a way. There's a way to use it. There's a way to use this knowledge, mm -hmm. this information, this knowledge in such a way that you could only feel wonderful and fantastic about your your relationship now your your special relationship okay there's a way of going like like for instance uh i don't need to worry about whether my partner or my children or my family are loving me good enough i don't need to worry about that i, I maybe i walked in here worried about that like they're not loving me good enough or maybe i haven't loved them good enough right I don't have to worry about that because there, the only real love there is is the love that is pouring out to me from my creator and me back to my creator forever unconditionally right now. That's what's really going on. And this is the only love that can fully satisfy me. So not only would, I, would that enable me to release everybody in my life from all my love demands <laughs> you know those love demands if you loved me you would blah 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 you know not only does that release everybody in my life from my so-called love demands which love does not make by the way not only does it release them but also if now i can experience a love that is fully satisfying to me fully satisfying to me right now right now nothing has to change so that's a way to hear what it's saying without going, well, I need to get a divorce. <laughs> I know, I know. And I'm glad you said that. It's funny, you know, but it's, it's, a very, it's a very good point. Because when we hear about true love and real love and that, you know, that there's no other love that can satisfy us, it's tempting to be, to be like, well, I guess my relationship is blah, blah, blah. It's tempting to... Um, to judge, you know, our special relationships, right? So, a special relationship is like uh, we pick people to love. Like, I'm going to pick you to love, okay? 
and everybody else, you know, whatever, you know. <laughs> but I'm going to pick you to love, and you're going to pick me to love, right? And you're only going to love me, right? Okay? Um, and so, you know, you'll just give your love specially to me, right? And I will give my love specially to you. But that's not how love works. That's not how love is. Love doesn't pick and choose. Thank God. Thank God that real love doesn't pick and choose among us. Even though that's what we heard and learned about God, who supposedly is love, we learned that God, who is supposedly love, picks and chooses and has favorites and sometimes gives his favor and then sometimes pulls it back. You know, that's what we've learned about love. Not realizing that we are in a relationship, a loving relationship that is unconditional, that is constant, that never fails, that doesn't pick and choose. A love that gives itself fully and completely, eternally to all of its creations. Now, until we love like God does, the author of love, we're not really doing love. <laughs> We're not really giving love. We're giving something else. We're calling it love. Okay? And that's what a special relationship is. It's the something else that's not love, but it's called by the name of love. And here we're learning about what real love is and what real love does. And we're learning that we are in a unconditionally loving holy relationship right now that we aren't aware of. That at any moment we could go, whoa, I am, I can feel the love of God within me now. And it is holy and completely satisfying at any moment. Because that is reality. That is what's really happening. That's reality. And any and anything else, that like love is conditional. Love is choosing. Love has favorites. Love is something that can be taken back. That ain't love. And then, and it also is perfect forgiveness for in any of our special relationships because now we need to have no grievances anymore of, of anybody for, uh, for not loving us good enough. And now we need not have any grievance or guilt about ourselves not loving good enough. You know, they, they, they didn't know how to love. I didn't know how to love. None of us knew how to love. And so, no guilt, no anger. If they, you know, no guilt, no anger. Right? Okay, beautiful. There, that was only two sentences. <laughs> I love it. There is no other love that can satisfy you because there is no other love. And so if you are experiencing like a, a lack of love, now you know that you don't have to go looking for it. You don't have to go earn it. You don't have to do anything but open yourself up to feeling and experiencing what you are being given and offered right here and right now. And it is fully satisfying. At any moment, we could allow that. You don't have to go looking for love. You don't have to worry about somebody has, somebody has deprived me of love. Or somebody's going to deprive me of love. Or I deprived somebody of love. No, none of that happened. None of that happened. Love has given itself completely to all of us. And we have returned it. And that's all that's real. That's all that's true. And we could experience the truth of that right now and, be, and feel fully satisfied. Isn't that amazing? Who knew? <laughs> Who knew I could have been fully satisfied right now <laughs> relative to love? You know, that's why I love A Course of Miracles. It's always reminding us of what we have, that we have everything right now. We have everything right now. And if we're experiencing any lack or anything that's not joy or love, it's because we are not seeing what's here and what's right now available to us all for free. That's what lack means. It means you ain't seeing what is all around you. You're not seeing reality. Because there is no lack of love in reality. 
Don't have to worry about losing love. Don't have to worry about uh, any love that was I was deprived of in the past. I don't have to worry about or feel guilty about any love that I feel like I deprived somebody of. I don't have to worry about that anymore. All I, could, all I could do is experience the love that is pouring upon me right now. Well, that would be different. <laughs> that would be very different. Do something different. Experience the love right now that you already have. Experience full, total satisfaction right now. That would be different. Because normally we're like, well, when I get this, I'll be happy. And when I get that, I'll be happy. And when I get so-and-so to act like this, then I'll have love. And when I have somebody treating me like this, then I'll have love. Oh, and I'm so sad about the love I didn't get or the love I didn't receive. That's what we're always thinking about. You know, un completely unaware that we are literally encompassed in perfect, unconditional love that fully, completely satisfies us. It's like a fish in water going, I'm so thirsty. If only I had some water. <laughs> uh, little fish, you are live in the ocean. <laughs> oh, I, but I'm so thirsty. If only I could get some water, I'd be happy. <laughs> That's like us. That's like us, you know, in an ocean, an endless, infinite ocean of love. Okay. All right. Then it says, and it says, this is the only love that is fully given and fully returned. Being complete, this love, the love from uh, our Creator and us to our Creator, being complete, this love asks nothing. Real love asks nothing. That's not how it is with my special love. <laughs> it's a lot of demands. If you love me, you would. And let's, let's look at our love agreement. <laughs> let's look at our love document, shall we? It's many pages. Many pages of agreements. <laughs> many pages. Please see page 52. <laughs> Exhibit 6. About the demands that I have for you who say you love me. <laughs> I do see there's a notary stamp in the bottom. <laughs> I do have my lawyer on speed dial. <laughs> but what did it say about real love, the love that we are receiving all the time? Uh, it makes, it, it asks nothing. <clears throat> wow. Okay. Good to know. So that we know, oh, that's love, that's not love. Oh, that's not, definitely not love. All right. Good to know what real, the difference between real love and fake love so that you're not tempted to uh, give in to the demands and the sacrifices of fake love. And also good to know the difference so that you don't make those demands in the name of love. Okay. So that you don't make demands and then go, in the name of love. <laughs> Right? Okay. So then it says, and this love being wholly pure, everyone joined in this love has everything. Wow. Now, you may have noticed this is not the basis for any relationship in which the ego enters. <laughs> or you could just say you at this moment. <laughs> Even though you're not the ego, because we've identified the ego, we could say, this is not the basis for any relationship in which we have entered. Why? Because every relationship on which the ego embarks is special. Okay? So, special is the opposite of everyone included in the relationship has everything. That's the opposite of special. Special is like, well, you get some of this, but not that, and then we get some of this, but that, and these, this person gets a little more love, uh, and this person gets a little less of my love, and this person gets a little more of my love, right? Everybody said, being holy pure, everyone joined in this love has everything. Okay, but the ego, uh, what does it say? The ego, every relationship on which the ego embarks is special. It's not everything for everyone all the time. Okay? The 
The ego is not about, hey, let's have everybody be, have love all the time. Let's have everybody have all the love all the time. That's great. The ego never, is, never comes up with that idea. You know, there's never the basis of the, of the relationship agreement that the ego makes. Like, okay, let's agree that we're both going to give our love to everyone equally. Like, what relationship ever started like that? What ever, special relationship ever started like that? Ego never has a relationship like that. Right? It's like, you know, we'll, we'll, we're going to start this relationship with some agreements about what's yours, what's mine, what's ours, what's theirs. You know, we're going to start it with some agreements, some limits on the love called our agreements. Right? Boundaries. What do you say? Boundaries. Oh, boundaries. Exactly. Boundaries. Boundaries on the love. Okay? That uh, every relationship on which the ego embarks is full of boundaries. It is special. It's very specific. It's conditional. Special also means conditional. Okay? Conditional love is special love. All right. That's paragraph number one. That's plenty right there, huh? It's like, oh my God, can we go now? <laughs> I'm not sure where this is going, but oh my God. I think I'm about to see that my relationships are not uh, based on changeless love alone. <laughs> It gets better. Okay, look, they got somebody read it, read ahead. <laughs> read, read ahead. <laughs> Spoiler alert. It turns no, out no great. Reading, no, no reading ahead. No reading. Yeah, great, great, great. Greg's like, oh, it's like a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. All right. So, questions or comments before we go on to paragraph two? All right. Okay, you truth junkies, you. Here we go. You're going to have to hit you with a pointer. <laughs> you hit me with a pointer? <laughs> How dare you speak the truth? That was Mrs. Cummings. She walked down the hall, not walked down the aisle, and you were beating the head, she'd poke you with a pointer. Oh, lovely. Thank you, Mrs. Cummings. <laughs> that sounds like some very special love. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so paragraph two. So we're talking about why the ego establishes relationships, what the ego wants relationships for, and the ego establishes relationships only to get something. So we could say, in the past, I would establish relationships only to get something, right? And then the person who wanted to give me what I wanted to get, well then, we would call that a match made in heaven. <laughs> you want to give me what I want to get? It's a match made in heaven. <laughs> and how long can that last? And then, exactly. <clears throat> and then, if they also, what they wanted to get, I wanted to give them, then for sure it was a match made in heaven. You know, you want to give me what I want to get, and I want to give you what you want to get from me? Oh, man, we, have, we hit the jackpot. You know, we call it a match made in heaven. Soulmates. What you say? Soulmates. Soulmates. <laughs> Soulmates. Okay. So that that's all the ego wants. Is the me concept. Is a me concept. To get. To get for me. It's always thinking about itself. Exactly. It's about the whole. Exactly. And and so it's a the ego is a belief system that we were taught you know, from birth and who knows how many lifetimes back, but it's a belief system that says, it's just me in here and I'm deprived and I need to get something to survive. That's what the ego is. It's a belief that you're separate and since you're separate, you're deprived and then you're gonna have to take from outside yourself to survive. That's what we call the ego. So everybody recognize that within themselves? They also call it the fearful mind. It's the part of us that identifies with our body. And so because we think we're a body, now we feel separate and vulnerable and deprived. And so now, now it's, it's a survival of the fittest. That's the ego, survival of the fittest. It's just me in here. I'm separate from the whole. 
and, and all that I have is what I take from myself and what I get from others. Okay. And then, but we are also taught by those who taught us this belief system, we were also taught that, that when somebody's willing to give you what you want to get, that's love. You know, or telling us that whoever we want to get something from, that's who we love. No, that's not who you love. That's who you want to get something from. That's not love. That's who you want to get something from. Just because you want to get something from them doesn't mean it's love. Just because they want to get something from you doesn't mean it's love. I mean, we, we all experience that. Oh, they, oh, he wants to get something from me. He must love me. <laughs> and then once they get something from you, they're like, see ya. <laughs> Oh, maybe they didn't love me. Maybe they just wanted to get something, and I called it love. And then I said, oh, love broke my heart. Love hurt me. Love broke my heart. I'll never love again. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody recognize that? That country song? <laughs> no, that wasn't love that broke your heart. That was your, your deception. That was your ignorance about the nature of love. You know, that hurt you. Love didn't hurt you. And that's the best news ever because now I don't need to be afraid of love because I never have been hurt by love. I was hurt by my own self-deception. I was hurt by my own attempt to get something instead of to give love. You can't get, go to get something and not experience deprivation or disappointment or grievance, a.k.a. hurt. So uh, now there's nothing to forgive. I've never been hurt by love. Hallelujah. I don't have to be afraid of love anymore. Love is not something that you get from another that they can take back at a given time. That's not love. But love is something that's pouring down upon you right now that could satisfy you completely. That, that, that's, you do have that kind of love. Wow. And when you allow, when you allow yourself to experience the love that is pouring upon you all the time, unconditionally forever, and when you experience total satisfaction, um, then you become a radiant magnet. You'll never experience loneliness again. When you are experiencing the love that your creator has for you, people are drawn to you completely. You could never be lonely again. You might be like, dude, I just don't have time. I just don't have time. You know, my calendar is so full. You might experience that, but you'll never experience loneliness. <clears throat> you don't have to go get love. <clears throat> And when you, and when you uh, experience the real love that you are already in, then you could, you'll have to turn, you'll have to like beat people off with a stick. Wow. So that's, re that's the real cure of, lo of loneliness. That's the real and only cure of loneliness. Is the realization that you are not alone. You can never be alone. And that you are loved completely in a wholly satisfying way right now. Wow. Okay. So, it says, right, it says the ego establishes relationships only to get something. And the ego would keep the giver bound to itself through guilt. So, the ego in me is going to, wants to get something from somebody else. And then it's going to give them guilt to make sure that they keep on giving it to me. Mm. You're bound. You're legally bound now. I gotcha. Now you're now I bound you with guilt. And now because of the guilt I gave you, you feel too guilty to go. Uh, I changed my mind. I'm taking it back. <laughs> right? You know. Oh well, you can't. You're bound by guilt. Just like an IOU. Exactly. Said, exactly. <laughs> and remember, remember, it was notarized <laughs> by the courts. <laughs> I pronounce you Getty and Getter. All right. <laughs> you may now punch.
punch them in the face <laughs> and call them love. Oh my God. All right. Now it's saying that so, it, and it is impossible for the ego to enter into any relationship without anger. The ego doesn't enter into a relationship without anger. Why is that? That's because the anger, I mean the anger, the ego believes that anger makes friends. Mm -hmm. You know, so the ego, it's exactly, it's like if I don't express anger at, at you know, in our relationship, you might just do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it. The ego doesn't enter. My ego doesn't enter into any relationships without anger. You know, because if there's no anger, if I'm not giving you guilt with my anger, then you, you're you not bound to me. You're still free to do what you want when you want, however you want to do it. I'm your friend, Dana, and you better not forget it. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. Wow. And uh, so in other words, my ego believes that anger keeps people with me. If I don't get angry that they didn't come home on, at, you know, on time, when they said they're gonna come home, then they're not going to remain with me. If I don't give them, if I don't bound, bind them with guilt, then they're going to leave me. They'll go do whatever they want with whoever they want to do it. Isn't that deep? Yes. Isn't that crazy? Oof. Hard to hear, huh? Wow. The good news is, is that even though you have an ego, you are not your ego. Right? And so now it seems like these are the these are the things I've been doing in relationships, not because I am the ego, but because I've identified with my ego. You know, I've identified with my ego. So I have bound people to me with guilt and called it love. Not because I am the ego, but because I have identified with the ego. I've identified with that thought system that's, that feels deprived, that feels lonely, that feels vulnerable, that feels ashamed, that feels like nobody would be with me unless I made them be. You know, I've identified with that belief system, and so I have been like that in relationships and called it love. And then, the, when, and then people were like that with me in relationships and called it love. And now we're all terrified of love. Now we can't even conceive of love without the demand of sacrifice with guilt. Can't even conceive of it. Can't even conceive of it. But hearing about it and hearing about real love, what real love is, is our, it's like it enables us to, to not have any guilt or anger relative to all those, all the relationship anger and all the relationship guilt. It enables us to just let it all go and go and go, I want to experience the real love, the real relationship that I'm in right now. I want to experience that right now. And when you allow that love to come into your awareness, then it literally, it's like it floods all of your consciousness and all of the darkness, the guilt, the anger, the fear, the shame, it, it, it goes, it, it's what happens to the darkness in this room when you flip on the light switch. Where does it go? It just goes back to nothingness. <sighs> wow. So in one sense, it's hard to hear what you've been doing in relationships and and still are doing, <laughs> I should include. It's hard to hear what we are, what we have done in relationships and what we're still doing. But it's the only way, of course, the miracle says, it's the only way to learn what real love is so that you can have relationships based on real love, changeless love. We don't have to worry, you don't have to be afraid all the time. Imagine that. Being in relationships where you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid to be yourself. You don't have to be afraid to be abandoned. You don't have to be afraid that you're going to be judged. You just don't have to be afraid. Imagine that. It's a good thing to imagine. Mm -hmm. In this totally 
possible, totally real. Okay, so but here we're talking about the ego. It says, um, now, it says the ego, what does it say? The ego, it's impossible for the ego to enter any relationship without anger because the ego believes that anger makes friends. Or we could say the ego believes that anger binds us, okay? My ego believes that anger keeps people with me. Now, this is not the ego statement, so it doesn't, doesn't broadcast that. Doesn't say that out loud, okay? That's the part, that's, that's the, 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 the quiet part, it doesn't say it out loud, but it is the ego's purpose. That is the ego's purpose. And why is that? That's because the ego really believes that the ego can get and keep by making guilty. Whoo, we, it sure does. You could say that the ego really believes that we can get love and keep love by making other people feel guilty. Now, it doesn't say that out loud because if it said it out loud, we'd be like, that's crazy. That's insane. That's crazy. But it doesn't say it out loud. Right. But that is what the ego believes, and that is what we have believed when we have been identifying with our egos. You know. So, you know, we've been trying to get love and keep love by making people feel guilty. That is in call and calling it love. And we've all been doing it. It was done to us. We've been doing it, so there's no need to hold any grievance. There's no need to feel any guilt. There's no need to feel angry. There's no need to feel guilty. We've all been doing it because that's what we taught. We're, that's what we were taught. And thank God it did not change anything in reality. It didn't change how loved we are. It didn't change that we are loved with a changeless eternal love. It didn't, change, it didn't change that they were loved by an eternal, changeless love. It didn't, it didn't do anything. All we did was nothing. <laughs> and then give ourselves a ton of guilt about it. It's kind of having the wrong concept as do unto others as they've done to you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Here we are feeling tons and tons and tons of anger and shame for trying to do nothing over nothing. When you try to get love and keep love by making guilty, you are literally doing nothing except making yourself feel guilty over nothing. Isn't that deep? And everything we feel ashamed of and everything we feel guilty about and everything we feel angry about is truly for nothing. It's for naught. It didn't happen. Whew, what a relief. What? A relief and it's my it's a wonderful reminder <clears throat> that I don't want to keep uh, doing it the ego's way I don't want to keep trying to get somebody and keep them by making them guilty I don't want to do that anymore in any of my relationships anybody I don't want to do that anymore only the ego does that and it doesn't it doesn't result in more love it doesn't result in happiness you know, it's when you really look at it, you're like, why would anybody want to stay with me if I'm giving them guilt? Why, why would anybody want to do that? When you look at it, it's insane. You know, well, if I just give them enough guilt, they will love me and stay with me forever. <laughs> you know, when you really look at it, you see that it doesn't make any sense at all. <clears throat> but we're all programmed. We're all programmed to do that, to believe that that's love. And then we wonder why we all have experienced so much pain in the name of love. We have experienced so much, our greatest pain has been in the name of love, you know? And now you know why. Because we were uh, doing hate and uh, binding others to us by guilt and calling love, when really that's not love, that's hate, that's fear. <clears throat> so it makes sense why we all have love PTSD. <laughs> Complex love PTSD. <laughs> not just regular love PTSD, but complex love PTSD. Wow. 
And I love hearing what love isn't. I love hearing what love isn't. I love it because it keeps me protected. So when somebody gives me something that's not love, I'm protected. I'm like, no, that's not love. That's a call for love, but that ain't love. <laughs> that's a call for love, right? So it's, <clears throat> it's very protective. And also it's very protective because it protects me from giving guilt and calling it love and then only getting pain myself. If, I, if I'm gonna uh, give guilt to bind somebody to me, to get somebody to keep somebody, even if they stay with me, I am not going to be able to experience satisfaction. You know, it's like, well, I got you and I'm keeping you because I made you feel too guilty to do something else. And you're not going to be like, and I feel fabulous. No, it's not. It's you literally, even if you got that person, that person agreed to stay with you because they felt too guilty. You are not going to experience love. You'll still feel totally insecure. You'll feel, still feel completely insecure. You'll never feel like, all right, I got that person. I feel great. I feel satisfied. You will never experience that. Mm -hmm. You'll just, can, you'll feel even more insecure. <sighs> wow. Or wish that they'd go away. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's why A Course in Miracles says that there's a part of us, the ego, that is terrified at forgiveness, the practice of forgiveness, because if it's true that guilt keeps people with us, and we really believe that, then if they release the guilt and forgive, then they might be gone. So the ego is, the, the last thing the ego wants us to hear about is forgiveness, which releases from guilt. That's what forgiveness does, it releases from guilt. And so it's like, I don't, want, I don't want to practice forgiveness and I don't want you to practice forgiveness because then you would be gone. Isn't that deep? And that's why the room is not overflowing with people. Because, you know, what we have learned about love and call love is, is, is the entire planet has been deeply indoctrinated, brainwashed into it. And so now we as a species are terrified of anything that releases us from guilt. And that's the whole purpose of A Course in Miracles. So <clears throat> that's why A Course in Miracles classes are typically very small. <laughs> if there's anyone in them at all. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying after 38 years of uh, learning to not take it personal, you know. I'm, I'm like, finally, like, it, it's the course, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> After 38 years of feeling like there's something wrong with me as a Course of Miracles teacher, I finally got it. It's not me. <laughs> you just don't want to hear this. Yeah, you know, so when, when Spirit says to me, Anna, really, it's not you, it's me, I'm like, exactly. <laughs> That's right, I finally got it. It's not me, it's not me, it's the course that is releasing from guilt. It's the course that is, it's the course of miracles that is um, revealing the ego's, the ego's scam. You know, the ego's love scam. You know, all right, beautiful. And it says, uh, so it says, the, the ego, this is not the ego statement, but it is its purpose because the ego really believes that it can get and keep by making guilty. As a matter of fact, getting and keeping by making guilty is the ego's one attraction. That's all it wants, to get and keep by making guilty. That's it. That's the ego's one attraction. And it's an attraction that is so weak that that attraction would have no hold at all, except that no one recognizes the guilt. No one recognizes what the ego's doing. No one realizes. No one recognizes it. Right, because we, we think it's love. So when somebody tries to get us and keep us by making us feel guilty, we're like, oh, they want me. They love me. Oh, finally, somebody loves me and wants me. Because uh -huh. they're making me guilty. So, you know, 
we if we recognize what the ego was doing, we'd be like, get away from me, ew, gross, <laughs> get away. But we don't recognize it, we don't recognize what it's doing, so it still is attractive to us. The guilt is still attractive to us because we don't recognize it. That's oh, whew, deep. Mm hmm. I love it. <clears throat> Okay, so it says, uh, because the ego always seems to attract through love. Now, why don't we recognize that the ego is offering us guilt to imprison us with guilt? Why don't we recognize that? Because the ego always seems to attract through love. And the ego has no attraction at all to anyone who perceives that the ego is attracting through guilt. <sighs> wow. So when the ego is, is trying to get us and keep us by making guilty, what does it always say? I love you. I want you. And I don't want you to want anyone else, okay? <laughs> and I don't want anybody but you, right? It says, I love you. I want you. Uh, <clears throat> P.S. You know, it's special. It's not for anybody else, right? Let's, uh, let's agree, let's sign a contract to that. Okay. And that's the reason that we don't recognize uh, the attraction of guilt. We don't recognize how the ego is playing its game. Because it calls it love. When really it's trying to get us and imprison us and bind us to it with guilt. Shackles like that. Wow, deep. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's not me, it's the course. <laughs> it's the course, stupid. No. Exactly, it's the course, stupid. <clears throat> All right, any questions or comments on that? <laughs> on that cheery, lovely little topic? <laughs> Woo wee. Kind of puts all your relationships in a whole other perspective. <clears throat> Well, it puts marriage in a weird perspective, too, because you think you're only supposed to look at that person and be with that person and da-da-da-da-da-da-da. You know, I can't even say hi to Matt. I might be, well, are you interested in him? You know, it's that whole thing you learn when you're younger. You're not going to stay with me. Why'd you talk to him for so long? Mm -hmm. It's just that. I mean, do you guys agree or am I nuts? Uh, it's no, very no. hard. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're looking at you with total recognition. <laughs> oh, they're looking at me like, yeah. what's wrong? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I just, it's tough because yes. it's been taught that. And we, and we learned that that was love. And then we get mad. And, and we learned, and we learned that that was love. love. You, you, know, you know, that, you know, that if you just give somebody enough guilt, that they'll stay with you. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, and then we go, and I, P.S. I love you, right? And, um, and so, um, and but that's what a special relationship is. It's a relationship where both people are using the guilt to attract the other one and to get the other one and to hold the other one there in their body with your body. That's what a special relationship is. It's using guilt to get and calling it love. Whew. And a holy relationship is where you are not using guilt to get them. You know, all you're doing is releasing them from guilt. All you're doing is celebrating the truth that you share, which is guiltlessness and sinlessness. That's what you're doing in a holy relationship. You're releasing each other from guilt and you're affirming each other's guiltlessness and sinlessness. And the, we, and the ego tells us, if you release everybody from guilt, you'll be alone. Nobody will want to be with you if you don't give them guilt all day long. And it's really the exact opposite. You know, as usual, the ego... Uh, the ego it believes the thing that is uh, completely not true. Mm -hmm. So the ego tells you if you don't give people guilt, then they won't want to be with you. When really, uh, when you release people from guilt, they all want to stay with you. 
You can't get rid of them. <laughs> Even if you want to. You can't get rid of them. Because you don't get, because you release them from guilt. Which is love. Which is real love. Right, and so then they feel that and they want to be with you. So that whole idea that if I don't give them guilt about where they're going and who they're talking to and what they do and blah, 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 that they'll leave me for somebody else, that's a big illusion. Really, we're setting it, we're setting it up where they will definitely want to leave us even if they don't, if we give them guilt. Right, so it's really the exact opposite, as always, of whatever the ego tells us. And you can always tell when you are identifying with your ego, and it's when you are tempted to give guilt in the name of love, or you're tempted to accept guilt in the name of love. That's how you know that I'm in my ego right now. <laughs> I'm in my ego right now. Uh, and they're in their ego right now. Well, good to know, because if you want to know, and if you want to experience real love, which means love you can depend on, love that does not change, love that's changeless, that you can always depend upon, you don't have to be afraid of, if you want that experience, it comes from knowing what love is not. You start there. What is, not, what is not love? Start there. And then from there, love will reveal itself to us. If I just do, if I just don't give guilt, then what is love will be revealed to me and I will experience it. If I just don't give guilt, okay? what does love not do? It doesn't give guilt. It doesn't use guilt to keep people with, uh, with you in their bodies and called by love. Wow. Let's all take a breath on that one. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Okay. Um, and I love it at that last line. And it says, the ego always seems to attract, seems to attract through love. And the ego has no attraction at all to anyone who perceives that the guilt is attracting, that the ego is attracting through guilt. So when you, when you see, you know, when you see the ego uh, trying to attract you through guilt in the name of love, but if you recognize that, you wouldn't be attracted at all. Somebody would be like, why didn't you call me last night? You said you were going to call me. Right. You know, if you, if you recognize that that's the ego, you'd be like, <laughs> Bye. Somebody's calling me on the phone. <laughs> right? If you, so you, the ego has no attraction to anyone who perceives that the ego is attracting through guilt, but calling it love. Well, and this seeps into all your relationships. I'm not all just of talking them. about romantic. And, I'm telling and you. All of them. Your stepkids, everyone. Your, da, 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 everyone. Your, your, it, your mom, a, your everyone. It's, awesome. just, it's not just about that. No, the, and that's the point he he makes it the, mm -hmm. the, the last sentence of the first paragraph for every relationship on yes. which the ego embarks is special. Every relationship that the ego yes. embarks on is special. Everyone the ego is trying to attract or to keep is special. Is or you could say has guilt in it. Yeah, is guilt. Yes, well, is using guilt. And Every special relationship has guilt in it. And when you're a child and your parent is telling yeah. you now, we expect you to do this, mm -hmm. this, 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 to this, get our love. To go to college, mm -hmm. to, to otherwise, you know. Yeah. Right. It's not acceptable. Everything. That's right. Put all that on you when you're young, mm -hmm. as you grow, it's still on you. Yes. You know, Absol so absolutely. Every sister's brother, everything. And that's everything why I was heart. saying that we, you know, we can release everybody from, from guilt, and we can release ourselves completely from guilt uh, in all of our relationships because we all learned this from the moment we took our first breath in our body. 
you know. And if you believe in reincarnation, we have been believing uh, that the ego uh, is love for lifetimes. And so they, our parents didn't, they didn't, they didn't receive real love to give, and their parents didn't receive real love to give, and their parents didn't, you know. And so, you know, nobody knew what they were doing. Nobody, if they had known better, they would have done better. You know, if I had known better, I would have done better. You know, so it really is the release from grievances, I believe. No. And it's also uh, liberation because now when the ego is attracting me with guilt to come imprison myself to it, to let it put shackles on me, then I can say, no, thank you. No, thank you. That's it. And, and now I remain free. Now I remain free from a guilty relationship that binds me to guilt. You know, that's what a special relationship is. It's a relationship where we're both bound by guilt. And we both uh, are using guilt to bind the other, and we're allowing the other one to bind us with guilt and calling it love. And then wondering, why do I hate the person that I say I love? Like, what? how, how does that happen? I totally was in love with this person, and now I want to run over them with my car. <laughs> How does that happen? Why, why is it that you only hate the one you love? Because they made you feel guilty. Exactly. What did you say, Greg? They made you feel guilty. Exactly. That's you, how anger enters into the relationship, is, yes. is through the guilt. Yes. It doesn't it show up angry. Mm -hmm. It shows up with the tool to make the anger exactly. appear and manifest. That's right. Which is what the ego needs to 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 feed on, to live on. Yes. And it uses guilt mm -hmm. to manifest its suffering. Yes. Anger. And so the person's angry like in your relationship mm -hmm. and you go, Oh, they're in their ego because they're angry. Mm -hmm. But you don't take your part Mm -hmm. of the guilt that you gave yes. the relationship yes. that manifested that anger. That's right. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <clears throat> the ego never attacks directly. Because the ego, even even the ego know, uses logic enough to go, well, if I attack them directly, they're just going to run away. So the ego, in its very, in its cleverness, goes, well, I'll just make them feel guilty and call it love, not realizing that to make someone feel guilty is direct attack. Yes? So what about the situation where we're not projecting on others but on ourselves, and like somebody in a relationship feels guilty and nothing, at least objectively, looks to have been coming from the other person to make them feel guilty? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they they very well, you know, have brought guilt in with them, you know. We all have, right? And we all have, yeah. exactly. So they can be feeling guilty even without you, you know, you know, telling them, using guilt. So, but you also, that's our, that is our holy role in our relationships is to, the purpose of the holy relationship is to release each other from guilt. You know, so not only not give them more guilt, but also release them from the guilt that they entered the relationship with. And also release them from the guilt that we also have given them in the relationship. In other ways, you mean? Yes. Okay, yeah. so properly interpreted call for love. Yes, exactly, exactly. And, uh, you know, the purpose of, remember, the, whole, the purpose of the holy relationship, the healed relationship, is to release from guilt. So everything that comes up in our relationships is a call or an opportunity to release from guilt. You know, and, uh, and the reason that we are specifically or specially together is because you, I need to be released from someone like you and you need to be released from guilt from some, by somebody like me, somebody who looks like me, who reminds you of somebody from your past. 
who gave you guilt. <laughs> Is that a wedding vow? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Do you agree to bind this person to you with guilt forever in the name of love? I don't. <laughs> Wonderful. I now pronounce you both free. From fear. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. Okay. Okay, great. So that was paragraph two. So we'll do one more paragraph and we'll probably stop there for the evening. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> if, you read, if you read the paragraph 10, it'll be worth it. Oh, okay. Read um, there? Yes. Go to paragraph 10. Okay. Yes. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll skip right. ahead. Uh, you know, maybe maybe I'll do that in the closing meditation. Okay. Um, the sick attraction of guilt that I'm attracted to guilt, that I have a sick attraction to guilt, it must be recognized for what it is. Why? Because the sick attraction of guilt having been made real to me, it is essential to look at my sick attraction to guilt and to look at it clearly. I gotta look clearly at my own sick attraction to guilt. Somebody gives me guilt and I'm like, <laughs> oh, you love me. <laughs> okay, because it says it's a because having been made real to you is essential that you look at your sick attraction to guilt clearly, and by withdrawing your investment in guilt, to learn to let guilt go. Okay, you're like I want to let go of guilt. Yeah, but you the first going to have to look at your sick attraction to it. You know, you don't look, you don't let guilt go without going. Dang, I have a sick attraction to it. I have a freaking fetish for guilt. <laughs> I have a guilt fetish. That sounds kinky. <laughs> Most popular fetish out there. Okay, but you don't let go of guilt until you look at your sick attraction to it. And how you have been attracted to it. Yep. It's like, oh, I've been, oh my God, I was attracted to that. And in, unless you look at your own sick attraction to it, then you ain't going to be able to let it go. But when you do look at your, your sick attraction to it, you're going to let it go. When you go, I have a sick attraction to you, you're going to let it go because you're going to go, that's sick. I don't want that. But you ain't gonna, you can't let it go until you look at it. Because until you look at it, you're gonna still think it's love. Because remember, the ego, even though it's trying to to trap you with guilt, remember, it's it's doing it in the form of love. So without you looking at it, when the guilt, when the ego tries to trap you with guilt, you're gonna be like, oh, they want me. They love me. Right? <clears throat> Unless you look at it, until you look at it and see your sick attraction to guilt, then you'll let it go. I'm so happy to hear about how to let guilt go. I'm so happy to hear how to let guilt go. Because it is sick and it makes me sick. Guilt is what makes us sick. When it says, when it calls it a sick attraction, it's an attraction to something that is sick and makes you sick. That's what guilt is. Guilt is sick. Guilt is sickness. The Course says guilt is the sole cause of sickness in every form. Isn't that deep? Wow. Are you talking about health and sickness? Yeah, I mean, body, mind, or spirit. Yeah. Body, mind, or spirit. You know, lots of, lots of forms of sickness. Right? And, and it's not, I'm not sick because somebody else gave me guilt, yeah. the, the doll, you know, yeah, somebody gave it to me, I caught guilt from them, <laughs> they gave me guilt and I caught it from them, I didn't have any choice but to feel guilty, right, no, it's my sick attraction to guilt, somebody offered me guilt and I went, oh, yes, I do, I will. <laughs> but just make sure you don't give your guilt to anybody else. 
<laughs> You're not going to give your field to anybody else, are you? <laughs> That's sick. Okay. Uh, and it makes me sick. All right, so I don't want to be sick anymore. It feels like crap. And so I want to let it go. And this is telling me how to do it. Um, quick question comp slash comment. It, it just occurred to me that, that um, one of the ways that I think I'm attracted to guilt is that um, is that I'm trying to get from the other person what is impossible to get mm -hmm. from them. Yes. I'm trying to get something that is said in the first paragraph, mm -hmm. an attraction to the, the creator and the between the creator. Yes. And the, I'm trying to get something that is unattainable from that person. Yes. That can only come from my source. That's right. And in relationship yeah. with my source yeah. rather than with right. <clears throat> a, a brother. Yes, beautiful. I love that. that. And therefore, I feel guilty about it because part of me, part of me knows mm -hmm. that I can't really do that. Yes. Does it, that make sense? Absolutely. So, in the special relationship, you're you're trying to get from that other person the love that can only come from your relationship with your Creator, your Source within you. You know. And so you feel guilty for trying to get something from them that you can never get from them, especially by trying to make them feel guilty. Yeah. Yeah, and then thank you for bringing us back to that. And remember that everything we're talking about right here, about how the ego is doing guilt and calling it love to attract you um, so that you don't feel free, and that so that you feel angry all the time, okay? Because it, like Greg says, anger feeds the ego. It's ego food. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say. I forgot what I was gonna say. The ego is like, do not say that. <laughs> do not say that. <laughs> anyway, okay. So it'll come back. It must have been good. That was talking about it coming from your source. And the get principle is it it's contrary to creation. Mm -hmm. You have to give. You can't yes. take. If you try to ever take, mm -hmm. that doesn't work. Yes. All it ends up happening is you get taken from. Yes. Because that's what you're doing. Thank that's you. what you're giving is taking. Yes. Beautiful. And so you can't uh, it comes from your source, which <laughs> is Yes. What's been established in the, in the creation. Yes. And, exactly. and I think there's exactly. a part, part exactly. of well said. There's a part of our minds that that no, actually knows mm -hmm. that this isn't going to work. Yes. But I keep trying to do it anyway. Yes. That's true. Exactly. Right. And I love what you're saying, Greg. You know, you can't take love. You can't get love because love only gives. Remember it said, love makes no demands. Love doesn't ask anything. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to get love, you're not going to experience love because love only gives. Love doesn't ask for anything. Love doesn't demand. Love doesn't take. Love doesn't get. So if you're trying to get love, you will never, you never experience love. You'll experience the opposite of love, which is anger and guilt. Wow. So amazing. So then it says, um, right, it says, now no one would choose to let go what they believe has value. So you're not going to let go of guilt if it's still working for you. <laughs> I'm not going to let go of guilt if it's still working for me. <laughs> so I think. So I think. Right. Yet, the attraction of guilt has value to you only because you have not looked at what it is. The guilt has value to you only because you have not looked at what it is, which means you have judged guilt completely in the dark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We haven't looked at what guilt really is, which is an attack, which is an attempt to imprison you. Okay? So as we bring guilt to the light, to the truth, 
Our only question will be why it was we ever wanted guilt. Why did I ever want to be in a relationship where I'm receiving guilt? And why did I ever want to get guilt? Why? That would be your only question once you really look at what guilt is. And how do you look at what guilt is? You bring it to the truth. You bring it to the light. You bring it to the truth. You here's the truth, and you bring the guilt to the truth, and you compare them. That's what it means to bring the guilt to the light, to the truth. Okay, here's guilt trying to get something, and here's the truth, which asks for nothing. Hmm, let's see. Okay, and it says, uh, your only question will be, once you've really looked at it, why it was you ever wanted it. So, the truth is, you have nothing to lose by looking open-eyed at guilt. Why? Because ugliness such as guilt does not belong in your holy mind. So you, have, you should have what? You have nothing to lose by looking open-eyed at guilt. You're not going to lose anything. You're not going to lose all your relationships just because you look at guilt. Okay? You're not going to lose anything. You know, All that's going to happen is that that ugliness in your holy mind is, is going to go. You don't want that kind of holiness in your, so I love it, it says ugliness such as this does not belong in your holy mind. That's all that's going to happen when you look at it, you're not going to lose. <sighs> so that's my thing. I'm afraid that if I don't, I'm afraid that if I, if I stop using guilt, I'm afraid I'm going to lose. Nobody will want to come see me. Nobody will want to be with me. They'll, they'll do whatever the hell they want to do. Whenever they want to do it. And so and then I'll lose. I'm afraid to let go of guilt. Because it, I think it has value. I think it keeps people with me. I think it keeps people with me in, in their body, with my body. I think that keeps me from feeling lonely. And so I'm afraid to let go of guilt. Because of the value that I have perceived in it, not realizing that it's what made me sick. It's what made me feel lonely. And it says, the host of God can have no real investment in guilt. The host of God can have no real, which means lasting, investment in guilt. You can't be a host of love, a host of God, and be invested in guilt. The, 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 the go together, you know. You can either host God or you can host guilt, you host the ego, but you can't do this, them both at the same time. What's it going to be, God or guilt? <laughs> Who do you want at your dining room table? Who do you want to let into your house? Uh, God or guilt? And let me tell you, guilt as a guest is hellacious. It takes you years to recover. <laughs> I am in recovery because guilt lived in my house for 25 years. <laughs> so now I'm in recovery. <laughs> and I invited them in. <laughs> All right. So, questions or comments? How does it feel to hear these ideas? <sighs> I invited them in by giving it. You invited guilt in by giving the guilt. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. there, there's a mutual attraction for the guilt mm -hmm. that, that's operating between mm -hmm. ones who think their bodies. Exactly. The guilt is attracted is is attracting me, and I'm attracted to it. Right. But only because I don't recognize it. As soon as I go, ooh, that's guilt. No, that's not love. Even though it has the form of love, as soon as I recognize it, I won't be attracted to it. I'm only attracted to it because I don't see it. I still go, oh, they want me, they love me, they're making me feel very guilty. You know? So, so yesterday, the <clears throat> section we read in the uh, complete meditative edition is called The Hidden Goal of Specialness, mm, yes. which is what we're talking about yes. again tonight. The hidden goal of specialness is mm -hmm. guilt. disguising guilt mm -hmm. as love. Yes, 
exactly. and keeping us confused about what is true and what is exactly keeping us confused between love and guilt. The ego's got us completely confused between love and guilt to the point where we think guilt is love and 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 forgiveness is uh, abandonment. You know, if somebody doesn't. Uh, want us and going to give us guilt to stay with them, we, te we tell ourselves they don't really want us. You know, this person over here wants me so bad they're giving me tons of guilt to stay with them. They love me. This person over here must not want me because they're not giving me any guilt to stay with them. So they must not want me. We're totally, con we have totally confused love and guilt. And of course, a miracle is helping us to uh, tell them apart so that we can stop being attracted to the guilt and then and repelled by the love. Right now we're attracted to guilt and repelled by the love. Well, you, you're releasing me from guilt and making me free. You must not want me. <laughs> so it seems like a fairly obvious point, but why are we so attracted to the guilt? Yeah. I mean, I guess one, because we feel special if someone's trying to make mm -hmm. us feel guilty, but two, we feel so damn guilty that... Yeah. We project and think we get rid of it. I mean, well, it's like it, a dual attraction. According to what I hear in this section right here, is that we're still attracted to it because we don't recognize it. We still think it's love. We still think it's love. But, okay. That's what it says in here, in and this it must section. Be because we feel special on the receiving yeah. end of the guilt, I guess. That, that's one of our, yeah. that's one of the ego's prime motivators is to. To feel special. Yeah. Yes, that's all the ego. Remember, it said that's all the ego wants. That's all the ego does. And the, mm -hmm. the ten tells us why we're attracted to it. Gotcha. I'm just gonna read ahead. <laughs> <laughs> says the guy who read ahead. <laughs> says the guy that said uh, that ten is well. Yes. I love so does it? Does that paragraph begin whenever you get? Yeah, yes, I marked it, Greg. Yeah. So I'm going to read it later. It says, "Whenever you are angry, you can be sure that you have formed a special relationship." Uh, all right. Uh, which the ego has blessed, my sweetie. Bye, my dear. Yeah. Uh, whenever you are angry, you can be sure that you have formed a special relationship, which the ego has quote blessed. Why? Because anger is the ego's blessing. So the ego's like, good special relationship, good job, here's some more anger. It's like, it's like a good, you know, it's the wedding gift that the ego gives to, the spe to bless the, your, the special relationship. Anger takes many forms, but anger cannot long deceive those who will learn that love brings no guilt at all. I'll say that again. Uh, what does it say? It says, uh, anger cannot long deceive those who will learn that love brings no guilt at all, which means what brings guilt cannot be love and must be anger. All anger is nothing more than an attempt to make someone feel guilty. And this attempt to make someone feel guilty is the only basis the ego accepts for the special relationship. Why? Because guilt is the only need the ego has. That's it. It's the only need the ego has. One need. It says, <clears throat> and as long as you identify with the ego, then guilt will remain attractive to you. Todd? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Greg. <laughs> yes. And I you, think the way we identify it is what you said not just giving it, it's accepting it also. Exactly. What, it, whether you accept it or give it, you're, you're allowing guilt into the relationship. That's exactly right. if you receive it, you're the one that's going to end up resentful and angry. Angry. If you give it, they're going to end up resentful and angry. And angry. So exactly. The ego doesn't care how it happens. Yeah, okay. The ego just wants to bring anger mm -hmm. into the relationship. Yes. And it's not advertising that you're going to suffer also, it's just the other person's going to suffer, okay? Mm -hmm. Bingo. <laughs> so and the really yes. big payoff is when the separation in that relationship happens because both of them are going to feel guilty about it at some point in time. And in totally that, angry. They both get totally that in juice of anger. And, then, and that's when the ego is in ecstasy. Ah! Yes. yes. Ah! It's a buffet. It's, it's a buffet. 
Yes. Anger button. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's exactly right. The, 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 it says where the ego's hatred triumphs. You know, when both people are like, you, you I'm so angry at you, I'm so angry at you, ah, let's separate. The, ego, the ego's hatred triumphs. The ego's like, yes, score. <laughs> I win. I know, it's really deep. It says, so the last line <clears throat> is, yet remember this, to be with a body is not communication. To be with a body is not joining. Remember that. And if you think that to be with a body is communication or joining, then you will feel guilty about communication, which means you will be afraid to hear love's voice, recognizing in love's voice your own need to communicate. So another, in another section it says if you believe that to be with a body is joining, then you will be compelled to keep their body with your body held there by guilt. If you think that to be with another body is to be in union. If you think union is with their body with your body and vice versa, then you will be compelled to keep their body with your body held there by guilt. If you think that to be with a body is communication. Wow. Okay. okay. It gets a little, right. little right. of this here. <laughs> okay. Um, back to that sentence, guilt is the only need the ego has. So kind of breaking that down, it's like the need to be right, the need to impose my worldview, mm -hmm. the, the need to, um, f to be special to see how smart I am. Or, I mean, it could be a million things There's like that. a million that. different ways. Yes. Yeah, a million different ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does it say about anger? Anger takes many forms. It takes many forms. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Todd? Sometimes this course makes too much too sense. sense. I know. I know. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, let's just do a, a brief integration meditation for two minutes. I'm just going to breathe. Bye, Todd. Bye. Thanks for your great questions, Todd. I'm just going to breathe and take these, allow these ideas to percolate down, maybe even use a one or two of them. <clears throat> Luckily, we won't have too much trouble finding places where we have given or received guilt. <laughs> you to bring to your awareness a situation or a relationship where there is anger, where there has been anger, your anger, their anger, and I want you to tell yourself, oh, well, I must have formed a, a getting and a guilt relationship that my ego has blessed, that my ego is thrilled about. I must have formed a getting or guilting relationship. How do I know? Because I am experiencing anger, or they are experiencing anger. I have formed a getting and guilty relationship that my ego is very happy about and is blessing with the anger. Beautiful. Now I want you to look into this relationship and see where it is that you were uh, giving guilt to another to keep them with in their body with your body. Where is it that you were giving guilt to keep them their body with your body? And you called it love. Where where was that? When was that? And breathe. Beautiful. Now let's question its results. How did you feel, even if they stayed and did what you wanted them to do, out of guilt, 
How did you feel after that? Did you feel secure, safe, inspired, happy? Did that guilt work to bring you communication, joining? It is I who have been sickly attracted to guilt. This did not happen to me. This is the result of my sick attraction to guilt. Not recognizing it. Thinking it is love and saying yes to it. And now tell yourself, I do, I want to let guilt go. <clears throat> guilt is making me sick. I do not want guilt I want to let it go. And so I acknowledge that this guilt and this anger is coming from my desire for it and nowhere else. Take a breath. And what I really want, what would satisfy me completely, is the love that my Creator is pouring upon me unconditionally forever. And the love that I am returning to my Creator. That is what I do want. In this holy instant, I recognize guilt for what it is, and I let it go. And I turn to the stately calm within me, wherein I can feel my Creator's love for me, shining upon me, shining within me, changelessly, unconditionally, forever. I feel the love of God within me now. I choose the joy of God instead of guilt. I choose the love of God instead of guilt. I do not have to get and keep love by making guilty. I already have all the love that my Creator is pouring upon me eternally. I already am the love that my Creator has created me to be unconditionally and eternally. I am not deprived of love. Considering that situation or relationship again, how does that person look differently to you? How does that relationship feel differently to you now? Now that you have applied the correct perception. that we 
we say amen. So take a breath, yawn and stretch. Oof. Wow, deep session. You guys are amazing, amazing. And you guys, thank you for joining. Thank you for adding your energy to make these ideas stronger, that they may go further out into the world that needs them so desperately. I appreciate you all so much. I appreciate you guys for coming out to the Miracle Center. And I'll see you next time I see you. So happy to be here.